hello guys and welcome in this new video in the game engine seri hope you guys are doing good in the previous video we spoke about the mesh renderer component so we're able to draw some static meshes like a cube and, and sphere in this video we're going to be moving forward and talk about the model renderer as you might probably know a model is nothing but just a set of meshes brought together to create a structure you can see we have some models here in this scene that i have on the screen here but before we get to that, I just want to show you the current stage of the game engine, the new things that I have added to it. So as you can see here, I implemented this event for dragging the scene and rotating using the mouse. I didn't want to use the Euler system uh, camera stuff because I didn't like it. It didn't feel so right to me. So that's my own opinion. So I decided to build my own and I'm going to be talking about that in a specific video to explain you how I achieved this. And I'm really proud of the result right now because when I move my scene, I really feel it. And uh, now to be able to use this, you simply use the mouse to rotate the scene. And if I hold the control key, then I'm able to move the scene. So holding the control key will help me move the scene around. You can see I can move it. But leaving the control key will help me rotate. And if I want to scroll, I can simply scroll. But it might happen sometime that you want to scroll a little bit faster to do that you simply hold the control key and scroll and it's going to be faster so it doubles the speed of scrolling when you hold the control key so that's basically what i've been doing in this ui here in this part of, um, of the ui and the control and yeah as i said it's something i'm really proud of and also one thing i also made which is quite good yet is the fact that the camera I have here as an entity is not the one I'm using right now to show this scene. So I've separated the editor camera from the runtime camera. What I mean by runtime camera is a camera that will be used when we're playing the game. I have this camera here as you might see. We have this sprite here. This is basically my camera and I could move it around and when I hit play then I'm going to be using that camera to show my scene. You can see if I go back and maybe put it put it somewhere here and push it even in and hit play you see I have even more even more result so and I'm, I'm also going to be doing a video and explain how I manage to change from one camera to the other when I'm hitting play because that wasn't quite easy I I kind of work hard to figure out how to make that possible and I'm going to make a special video to talk about how I did that so I, I've been changing some couple of things on the UI, but I'm not quite satisfied yet the way it looks. So um, let me know what you think if you find it good with these colors and things like this, but I'm not quite satisfied and I'm still working. The thing I'm working on right now is to have a gizmo to actually move my object around the scene. And that is also something that I find really hard because there are some library out there and um, I've tried to use some and you know, I'm. It's kind of hard to put that into my project because I'm using an entity component system and people who build that library didn't you know have that that architecture in mind so it's kind of hard to bring that into my system one thing I really want though is that if you guys know anything that could help to create a grid in OpenGL not using fixed pipeline please share the link below or if you know something that could help me to create my gizmo or anything like that please share with me that would really be welcome One last thing I want to mention before we get started is the fact that you guys can get the source code of this game engine on my Patreon page by becoming patrons. I basically have two versions of this game engine, the one you're seeing right now and this one also. The second one that I've shown is a little bit ahead of the last one but both do have everything you need, lighting system and stuff like that for you to get started and create something more specific to you. So if you guys are interested in that. I provide a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Thank you. I first want to give a brief overview of the changes that I made on my mesh class. I'm not talking about the mesh renderer class or component. The mesh renderer is still the same. I haven't changed anything there. But the mesh class has, has changed because um, I'm going to be using this same mesh class to load my models. And uh, somehow I had a problem with it. And the problem was the fact that I couldn't have a specific material for a mesh in a sense that if you remember from the previous video in my mesh renderer system i had 
an if state if statement to actually check if the mesh has like a material if it didn't have like something like, like a material so I will go out and use a default material and that was a bad idea because first of all having an if statement in a you know in a function that's gonna be called every frame it's a bad idea so if you can avoid that do that as much as you can because that will slow down your program so that's why I decided to put my material inside of the mesh class and as you can see my mesh class only has a VO, a vertex array and the material that goes with it and uh, I just added that material to the constructor to actually initialize this mesh with a specific material and this is also a good idea because as I said I'm gonna be using this to, to load my model and as you know a model is a set of um, meshes so I somehow need to have for each mesh a material that's why I have this constructor here so let's go to our model class and have a brief view on that now this model class is based on the learn OpenGL tutorial of model loading but I have customized it for my own purpose because the mesh class that I have is quite different from what they have I mean the way I'm loading my model the basic structure of a simp or loading model is there but the way I'm actually handling the material and stuff is different so I get inspired by learn OpenGL to actually um, create my own loader and as I said I'm using a simp one reason why I'm, I'm using LSIM is the fact that LSIM support a lot of uh, 3D model format, OBG, blend, whatever you know. And so that's why I think it's a good idea to use it. As you can see, I basically have a constructor here which takes a file name and it's going to call the load function. And the load function here will basically define some basic stuff about loading a model with a SIM, like creating an importer, creating a scene, check if the scene is ready and stuff like that and you call the pass function this pass function is gonna you know pass each mesh and the pass function call the pass mesh down here and you can see here to pass a mesh I should you know go and check the vertices the normals the texture coordinate in some case you might also want to pass the B tangent and the tangent and stuff like that or whatever you might want to do but I remove that for now if I use that then I'm gonna put that in a feature but right now I don't need that so and here I can pass the indices for my vertex uh, for my vertex array and uh, here I can pass my material and the pass material simply goes out and you know I create a custom material this is a material that I've created on my own so let me show you the code of that material as you can see as I said I'm using the physical base rendering uh, lighting system so that's why instead of having diffuse specular like in funk lighting I have albedo, normal, uh, metallic roughness, uh, you know, uh, ambient occlusion and as you can see here I have the albedo which is the base color which is the same thing as the diffuse color of a material and you can see I have some factor here the ambient occlusion factor, the metallic, the roughness down here you can see I have all maps because in some case you want to use a texture for ambient occlusion of a normal map and stuff like that and here you can see I have this set uniform which is simply a function to send this data to a shader to make any rendering so this is basically my material class and if I go back to my model here you can see I create a material and uh, it basically has no albedo color so it's simply dark and I put some value for the roughness and metalness this is just how I'm doing it right now and uh, the idea is to load this and if you want to change this you might change this at runtime has the diffuse color which is nothing but just the albedo and here you can see I also go out and pass the metallic factor if it has because there are some models that are um, created specifically for the PBR so that's why I want to also get this metallic and roughness stuff and down here I can get the albedo map the metallic the normal map the ambient occlusion the roughness map and that's how I can get this using this function here um, I'm doing this because I need to go out and make sure I don't load the texture twice because some meshes might have the same texture for like ambient occlusion so that's why I have this function here to get the texture I'm passing the type of the texture and you can see these are the types diffuse, normal, metalness, occlusion, roughness so I simply pass the type of the texture and this guy will make sure we load that texture if we haven't loaded yet and this function is simply meant to load the texture and give the ID of that that's why I'm calling it here to give the texture 
ID. So that's basically how I can create a model and use it to render. And to, to render it, I simply call this function here, which is going to loop through all meshes. You can see down here, this is where I'm going to be storing all my meshes. And so I can simply uh, loop through and, you know, render all my meshes. How do I actually render this? Now I go to my model renderer system. As you already know, this system will target any entity that has a transform and a model renderer. And as you can see here, I didn't implement any update function because I have nothing to update yet. So that's why I only implemented the render function. And I simply get my transform and send the data to the shader, send the model matrix to the shader. And here I also get the model renderer and I simply render all the shaders. And as you can see, the shader I'm using is the same thing uh, I've been using for the mesh renderer because uh, rendering a model is nothing but just rendering a bunch of meshes. That's why I don't need another shader to render models. That's why I'm just using this here. I simply send for each shader inside of this model the data to the shader here and render it. And that's why you can see we get this nice looking result on the screen right here as you can see. You might be wondering why I have this aliasing effect and things like that. It's because first of all I'm using OpenGL 3.1 which normally um, does not support multi sampling for frame buffers so I've tried and yeah but when I run this game you can see that there is a difference here we have a better result so my default frame buffer can actually handle sampling because um, uh, GLFW is actually using that so it's making a sample for us but I cannot create my custom frame buffer with the multi sampling to have uh, smooth edges that's why I have to do with this I might change my computer in the future to have something different but for now this is all I got and I'm doing with it but it's still fine I like it I like the way it looks and so that's basically how um, I managed to render my model so if you guys learned something from this video please let me know in the comment section below if you have any question any concern or you want me to speak about something specific please write me below thank you for watching and have a nice day evening or whatever you have right now Ciao.